Uh, welcome back to our Bible study. And remember, we are in the book of uh, Colossians. And this is the uh, third episode. We've already, you know, had, you know, first episode and second episode. And this is uh, the uh, third episode. So let's go immediately to the world and, and we read. Colossians uh, chapter 1 from verses uh, 9 to uh, 14. And so from the day we had, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that uh, you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us, you know, from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have a redemption the forgiveness of our sins. Let's ask the Lord in prayer that he may, uh, you know, help us understand this word. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus Christ. And uh, we thank you once again for granting us this opportunity to continue studying your word. Lord, I ask you that you help us. You know, apart from you, we cannot understand your word. It is for this reason that I uh, pray, Lord, that you will open our eyes so that we may behold glorious things in your word. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, friends, um, you know, let, 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 let me start by reminding you a little bit of what, you know, we uh, studied, actually, that you may at least remember you know, or, or where we started from and where we are going. Um, you know, when we started, uh, we began our study, you know, we said that, you know, the Apostle Paul was writing uh, to these uh, Colossian believers, uh, acknowledging that, uh, you know, the they have come into contact with a sort of, uh, sort of false teaching, uh, you know, new teachers uh, visiting, uh, you know, group of teachers that come to this particular congregation. And they were telling them that what you've uh, heard from Epaphras at first is good, but uh, what we've got is is better. You know, they they were actually, you know, they they were telling them that if you follow our uh, rituals, if you follow these speculative uh, teachings that we are giving you, these speculative beliefs, then you will be able to experience, you know, the deeper knowledge of God and the greater experience or the greater, you know, you'll be able to experience, you know, that uh, the power of God only by following, you know, what we are teaching you. And uh, that is the kind of, you know, teaching that Paul has been combating, you know, and and he combated that, you know, kind of uh, uh, teaching by pointing the Colossian believers to the uh person and the work of Christ Jesus by pointing these Colossian believers, you know, to the redemptive, you know, the sufficient redemptive work of uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ. And uh, in fact, remember that we said, we said that, you know, the, uh, the major theme uh, of the entire, you know, Colossian letter is that we believers are complete in Jesus Christ. Christ is everything that you and I need. He's the sovereign Lord in whom there is everything that I and you uh, need. You know, uh, <clears throat> all the resources, uh, you know, that you need in order to grow in grace, all the resources that you need in order to live a godly life, uh, friends, are, you know, found in Christ Jesus. And so in the uh, last passage that we looked at, uh, we were actually looking at, you know, uh, Paul's uh, thanksgiving in prayer. You know, uh, Paul was, you know, thanking the Lord, uh, you know, for, you know, what the Lord uh, was doing in the lives of these Colossian uh, believers. You know, um, he, he actually uh, noticed that, you know, there were evidences, there were marks and signs of God, you know, at work in the lives of these Colossian believers. And, you know, he was 
thanking the Lord, so grateful to the Lord for, you know, what he was doing in the lives of these, uh, you know, uh, uh, people. And so I, I would want us, you know, to continue in looking at this prayer, you know, you know, from verses 9 and downward. I want us to look at this, you know, uh, prayer. And so uh, in this prayer, uh, you know, in this passage that we've read, you know, the Paul outlines he outlines it, you know, for the Colossians. And I would like, you know, to point you today to the to four great, you know, truths that we see uh, particularly, you know, in this uh, in this passage. Um, there are so many, you know, more, but I've got, you know, to restrict myself to these uh, on these four only for the uh, sake of uh, uh, time. And when you look at, you know, verse nine, Paul says, "And so from the day we had." Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Paul heard about what was happening in the lives of these people. You see, what Paul is saying, in fact, is when I heard, you know, the report, you know, from Epaphras, when I heard about what, you know, the Holy Spirit was doing in your lives, when I heard about, you know, um, the graces that, you know, he has he had implanted in you, the faith, you know, your love, your hope, Immediately, you know, Paul is saying, I started you know, praying for you. Immediately, we engaged in, you know, a continuous round of prayer, you know, uh, for you. Paul heard about, you know, that's what he says. When I heard, he heard what was happening in their lives. And then he was engaged, you know, to pray. He was drawn to God, you know, to pray, you know, for the work of the Holy Spirit, you know, to continue and increase in the lives of these, uh, uh, these, uh, these believers. Oh, so often, ladies and gentlemen, we are, uh, we, our prayer is in response, you know, to disaster, you know, to affliction, to difficulties. And, uh, and of course, that's entirely, you know, uh, appropriate. You know, there is no, there is no better place, you know, to go to God than, you know, when things are going wrong. There's no better place, you know, to go to, you know, uh, to the, there's no better place, you know, to go than, you know, the shelter of the wings of the almighty God, uh, you know, than, um, uh, than you know in in the, in the, in the time when we have uh, we have we have needs but 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 I want you to notice again you know something that maybe many of us don't really you know think about you know Paul's logic Paul's principle you know is that you know when he sees you know the holy spirit working on in in the lives of these colossian believers he was a drone you know to god you know it it, it drew him you know to god and he started actually, you know, praying, and that is, and that is very important. That is very important for us because we don't tend, you know, to think that way. Mm? Normally, when things are going, you know, well, we are tempted not, in, you know, not to pray. Uh, but uh, friends, uh, this morning, uh, you know, it is my prayer that you know Paul's example for us about, you know, uh, should remind us uh, that we must attend, you know, to prayer, not only in hardship, right? But especially in the times uh, uh, where spiritual work is going on, you know, uh, that the work of the Spirit might, you know, um, continue and, uh, and might, uh, might, might uh, increase. This is my prayer this morning to you and to me uh, personally. Then let's move on and, and look at the content of, uh, the content of, these, uh, of this prayer. You know, uh, in other words, as I've started, you know, saying, uh, Paul, you know, has, um, <clears throat> and Paul begins, you know, by giving thanks in this uh, particular verse, you know, he's, uh, he's actually announcing this prayer, you know, he begins by telling them of how, you know, his continued prayer has been, you know, for them. And now he's going to tell them what he is praying, you know, for them, right? What he is, you know, uh, Praying uh, for them, and we will see it uh, particularly in these, uh, uh, in these, in these uh, verses. Okay, and in particular, we see when you look at you know the passage, uh, we see uh, three things that the apostle Paul is, is is praying for, and those are the remainder of uh, the main point, the main point that I would like you know to look at, uh, you know, uh, today. Uh, look at you know. Let's go back in again to verse nine, and we we'll read. And so from the day we had, we have not ceased, you know, pray for you. Aha, look at, you know, number one, he says, what, what, what now he's praying for these Colossian believers, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all, in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. See, ah, uh, yeah, you know, Paul, 
That is, that is number one, that they will, Paul is praying that, you know, they will be filled with the true knowledge. So remember, you know, remember again so that we, these new teachers, these false teachers, eh, you know, they were telling the Colossian believers that uh, by following, you know, these rituals, by following these speculative beliefs, by following these secret teachings that not many people know about, once you just, you know, attain to them, then we will help you experience the deeper knowledge that you've never received, you know, from Epaphras, that you've never had, you know, before. Oh, man, that, but Paul, Paul, Paul is combating that kind of, you know, teaching. And Paul is saying, no, 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 you don't need actually that kind of, you know, knowledge. What you need, what you need, ladies and gentlemen, it is, you know, um, you need, you need, you need the true knowledge of, uh, of God. You need the true knowledge of God, all right? And, and so Paul is not unconcerned, friends. You may think that Paul is not, but Paul isn't concerned about, you know, these believers growing in the knowledge of God. No, he isn't. You know, look at, for instance, and that's how he brings you this first, you know, petition. And saying that I'm praying that you will be filled with the knowledge of God. See, in other words, Paul is, 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 is telling, you know, these believers, that this is the kind of knowledge that I want you to have. Not a knowledge that, you know, these false teachers want you to have. You see, but the kind of knowledge that I want you to have, it is the knowledge which is a practical knowledge, a knowledge which impacts your daily living, you see, and which bears fruits. That's the kind of knowledge that I want you to grow in. I don't want you to grow in, you know, any sort of, you know, strange knowledges that, you know, people are offering to you. You don't need that kind of knowledge, the kind of knowledge that you need, the kind of wisdom that you need, the kind of understanding that you need. It is, you know, a knowledge. It is an understanding and wisdom which is rooted, which is grounded in the word of God. Okay? It's rooted in the word of God. So remember... You know, where we started from, you know, Paul is saying that you have already received the word of truth and the kind of knowledge that, you know, I want you to have. It is that kind of knowledge which is, is, is consistent with the gospel that you already, you know, have uh, received. See, Paul wants, you know, these Colossian believers, as far as, you know, we are concerned, friends, you know, to have a biblical knowledge, the knowledge which is a practical grasp of the will of God. That's the kind of knowledge that, you know, Paul wants you and I, you know, to have. Not strange knowledge, not strange understanding and wisdom, but knowledge, understanding and wisdom which are grounded in, you know, in the world of God. Notice again, number one, you know, he, he does not only say that, you know, this knowledge should be, you know, grounded in, and rooted in the word of God, but he says it is a kind of knowledge that, you know, bears fruits. Oh, hallelujah. A kind of knowledge that bears, you know, fruits. Let's continue reading. You see, Number, you know, uh, and, and actually, when you look at verse, in, notice in verse, you know, 10, the specific, you know, fruits he wants, you know, to see from this knowledge of God. In verse 10, let's read, you know, verse 10. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of, uh, you know, of God. See, when you look at this particular verse, you know, what do you see? Me personally, when I study and I look at, you know, this verse 10, I see specifically, you know, three things, you know, Paul says the result, you know, from this kind of uh, knowledge. Okay? Oh, friends, when you are filled with the, uh, with the kind of this kind of uh, knowledge which is rooted in the word of God, with this kind of understanding and wisdom which is rooted in the word of God, Look at, you know, at what he says. Number one, you walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. See, as he puts it, you know, in this verse 10, you walk in a manner worthy of uh, the Lord. Number two, you seek to please God. You know, that's what, you know, the kind of knowledge that you have, the kind of, you know, wisdom and understanding that, you know, grounded, that are grounded in the, this is what a result in. You know, they will enable you to do what, to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Number two, they will enable you to seek to please God. And number three, they will enable you, you know, to bear, to bear, you know, fruit, okay? 
uh, ladies and gentlemen, we must remember, you know, Paul's uh, great, you know, uh, dictum, you see, that, you know, I think uh, probably you are familiar with it, you know, that, you know, truth always, you know, leads into uh, godliness. You know, that knowledge of God is not so that we can go home, you know, and impress our friends with what we learn in, in Sunday school and impress them with what we learn in, in Bible study. No, that's not the, <clears throat> that's, that, that's not the purpose, you know, of uh, the knowledge of God and understanding and, and, and the wisdom of God. No, it is so that we may become more, you know, like uh, like like Christ, all right, and can you know better carry out God's directive to us and experience, you know, that you know uh, truth for the purpose of uh, promoting uh, godless. That is the purpose of having the knowledge of God, all right. See, and that is you know the first actually you know prayer. Paul is asking, you know, I am praying, you know, with Paul that God will fill us, you know, with the spiritual um, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and number two uh, like with with paul i'm praying that you know you know this knowledge of god this wisdom and understanding will result you know will cause us you know to walk in a manner worthy of the lord will cause you to seek god and will cause us you know to bear to bear fruit okay number two uh in in verse 11 in verse 11 you know the apostle paul also asks that we will be you know strengthened with the power real power you know, remember again, ladies and gentlemen, that you, these first teachers at Colossae, you know, had said that nothing, you know, will, we will give you. I mean, uh, not only we will give you a deeper knowledge of God, but we will, you know, help you experience, you know, uh, you know, that power of God only if you are willing to, you know, follow, you know, to receive, to accept our secret teachings. Our, these speculative beliefs, these, you know, riches that, you know, we are teaching you. Uh, but, you know, Paul, again, you know, contradicts that. You know, Paul, again, rejects that and say, no, 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 no. The kind of power that you need is not in any power that is offered you by any, any human being. It is a power that emanates from God. It is a power that originates. From, it is a power that is given us, you know, by, by, by God. And that is what I want you to be strengthened with. You know, real power, real divine power. You know, Paul asks, in fact, that they, that they will be strengthened with all power in accordance with his glorious, with the glorious, you know, uh, might. Oh. Friends, it is important, you know, to note that, you know, Paul is pointing to a power outside, you know, the uh, Colossians. He's pointing to a power which is not, a, you know, a, 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 which does not come, you know, from us. It is not a power within believers, within us, within the Colossians that is praying to be increased. It is a power which, you know, comes uh, from God and which God implants in us and strengthens us with. You know, remember, you know, I've actually, you may be familiar with that. You may know, you know, such people. Today, we have a number of, you know, good, you know, Christian teachers who actually um, uh, are adopted, uh, you know, into, uh, you, you know, uh, to what is essentially, you know, pagan outlook, a worldview. And what are they telling people? They are telling Christians that, you know, you know, the power that you have comes, you know, from you. It comes from you. You know, then you, you have just to look to yourself, inside yourself, and awaken, you know, the giant. But that message is contrary to what, you know, Paul is teaching here. Remember, or, you know, all over the Bible, if when we read the Bible, the scriptures make, makes it very clear. Like in Psalm 124, verse 8, you say, our help does not come from us, ladies and gentlemen. Our help, you know, comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And that's what, you know, Paul is saying. No. Yes, you need that power to operate within you. But the power that you need inside of you does not come from inside of you. It comes, you know, from the Holy Spirit. He makes it very clear when you look back, you know, somewhere else in he, one of his letters, especially, you know, uh, Ephesians, uh, ch chapter, uh, chapter, chapter uh, 3, uh, specifically verse, you know, 16. He talks about it, that, you know, the kind of power that we need does not come, you know, from within ourselves. It comes, you know, from outside of us. It comes, you know, from the Holy Spirit. And that's kind, that the kind of, uh, you know, power that we need oh how i pray that you know we will experience that real power that comes you know from god and this power again according to paul you know uh, look at you know with me in this uh, passage paul it, it, it poses, produces uh, three things it's, it is not a power uh, you know for the sake of thrills no it is not that kind of power that makes us superior to others you know, to look at ourselves as if, you know, we actually experience certain things that other believers, other saints cannot experience. No. Look at, you know, three things, you know, uh, Paul says uh, in these, uh, you know, uh, that uh, that uh, should be produced by this kind of uh, uh, power. Okay. Uh, verse 11. Mm. Uh, verse 12. 
you know, giving thanks to the Father. I mean, no, verse 11. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. Look at these three things when you look at with me in this passage, in this verse, particularly 11. There are three things that I see that Paul says, you know, uh, this uh, power produces in the lives of uh, believers. Number one, he says, it produces steadfastness and endurance. That's what he says. You see, giving you thanks to the Father was qualified you. I mean, uh, verse 11, um, all power according to the glorious might for all endurance, number one, and patience, number two, uh, with joy, okay? So, number one, it produces, you know, uh, steadfastness and endurance. And let me say, let me remind you of what, you know, this kind of endurance is. This endurance that Paul is talking about is that quality of, you know, of, of steady persistence, whereby a person is able, you know, to continue until they reach, you know, the goal. We haven't, you know, reached where we are going in our eternal home, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture says that, you know, we fight with the devil. We fight with the flesh. We fight with, you know, the world. Though Christ has, you know, won the victory, of course, we don't fight, you know, for victory. We fight as believers. We fight, you know, from victory. Uh, but the reality is that we are still fighting with those, you know, things that we haven't yet reached, you know, where we are going. So we need endurance. We need, you know, steadfastness. <clears throat> Number two, he says that he, he prays that, you know, these believers, as far as we are concerned, that they should, should have, you know, patience or long uh, suffering. Oh, friends, that is the virtue of a quiet spirit, all right, in the face of our provocation, in the face of, you know, tribulation, all right, that we believers will be, you know, able to have the spirit of Christ who is able, remember, to pray to his heavenly father, father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing you know paul says that uh, that is the kind of uh, you know patience that is the kind of thing that i want you to have you know in 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 your in your life okay and then number three says not just um, uh, you see, and remember we are saying this is the result of this kind of power. This is what, you know, Paul wants us, the real power of God to produce in us. No, the power does not, this power does not make us different from others. This power does not, you know, give us just a thrill. No, it is the power that produces, uh, you know, endurance, steadfastness. It's the power that produces, you know, uh, patience in, uh, in our lives. All right. Not just a raw power which gives you some sort of experience, all right, <laughs> that other people haven't had, but a power which empowers you your Christian, your Christian, you know, life. And finally, finally, he says that uh, Paul desires that, you know, this power to be, uh, you know, a power that produces a uh, joy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not what Paul is saying, okay? Paul is not saying that I want you to go through those uh, things and never, ever struggle, you know, with it. No, 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 no. That's not what Paul is saying. He's talking about. Paul is not saying that I want you to go through these difficulties and never, ever sorrow at your trials. No, no, no. That's not what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, I know that you're going to be downcast. Uh, uh, but but even in, the, in your downcastedness, I want you to experience, you know, joy. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that you know, Paul was writing this Colossian letter in prison? Have you ever read one of his you know, prison letters is uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the letter to Philippians? And it is full of joy. You know, now, and sometimes I wonder, how Paul in the world, are you in prison but you're still saying that you rejoice in the Lord? See, this kind of joy that Paul is talking about, it is not the joy that is you know, based on circumstances. No, it is the kind of joy that is based on the presence of Christ in our lives. Can you imagine somebody in prison, but he's still saying, ah, I want you to have joy in the midst of, that, of those trials and tribulations. Because that joy does not come you know, from circumstances that you go through. It comes you know, from the, uh, the, the presence of God. In, and, and in fact, that's, you know, when you look at this, uh, Paul is like, Paul is saying, so the only way you are going to experience joy in the, midst of, or in the midst of your endurance, in the midst of your patience, is, you know, if the Holy Spirit is at work in you, according to the power, the, the, power, of, uh, the power of God. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, that is my prayer this morning, that this power of God will enable you to live a godly life, will enable you to become more like Christ every, every day. And finally, uh, Paul says this in the fourth. Uh, remember, I've talked about, you know, for great truths that I want us to, to look in this passage. And uh, we now moving to our final point. And finally, Paul says this, uh, this in the fourth thing, in verse 12. Look with me in verse you know, 12. He says, giving you... Um, 
thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints. Let me continue up to uh, verse 14. In light, he has delivered us, you know, from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our, of our sins. Oh, friends, Paul is getting ready now to... You know, is getting ready to, to recount the things which are, are uh, you know, true about all believers. Uh, that we, n- number one, look at what he says. You know, that we share in the inheritance of uh, the saints in light. Number two, he says, verse thirteen, he has delivered us, you know, from uh, the domain of darkness and transferred us, you know, to the kingdom of his beloved son. Number three, number three, he says, in whom we have redemption. He has forgiven us. He has redeemed us, you know, from sin. Those are the things that, you know, Paul is talking. And because of all these, I am grateful to them. No matter what is happening into my life, when I look at the spiritual blessings that the Lord has poured into my life, all right, you know, I am so grateful, you know, to, uh, to, the, to the Lord, okay? So Paul says that, you know, I give thanks for God. Having quali- he has qualified us for his inheritance. In other words, what, you know, is uh, Paul saying? Paul is saying that... Um, all the conditions, you know, have been met, which entitle us, you know, to a, a full standing as the children of God. You know, it has been done, you know, for, for us. Remember, you know, God has justified us. He has justified us, ladies and gentlemen. He has delivered us, you know, from the penalty of sin. We were condemned. You remember the Bible says that we are all, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So, and the, you know, the, the wages of sin is eternal death. We have to die. We have to spend eternity apart from the Lord. But the Lord said that, you know, he has delivered us. You know, by dying, you know, the Bible says that, you know, he died. He, you know, um, he died for us. You know, he died for our sins and rose for our justification. He bore our sin, you know, uh, in his body on the tree so that, you know, we, you know, having died to sins, we might also live for righteousness. God has delivered us, you know, from the penalty of sin. That's why in the Paul could say in Romans chapter 8 that, you know, those who are in Christ, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because he has delivered us from the, you know, penalty of sin. And it is only that when you look at this passage, the Bible says that he has delivered us, you know, from the power of sin. Ladies and gentlemen, we are no longer under the dominion of darkness. He has transferred us from the domain of darkness into the, the, the kingdom of his son. Oh, we are no longer under the power of sin. That's what actually, you know, even Paul says somewhere else in the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 14. He says, we are no longer under the power, the power, uh, we are no longer under the power of, uh, the power of, uh, uh, the power of sin. Look with me somewhere else in this uh, Colossians chapter, you know, uh, chapter 2. Uh, uh, chapter 2, somewhere Paul says uh, in, in verse 10, and you have been filled him, in him, um, uh, Circumst- oh, no, these are uh, no 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 he no it is verse 15 uh, chapter 2 verse 15 uh, excuse me 15 he says he disarmed the rulers he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them you know to open shame by triumphing over them you know in him he disarmed the rulers that's why i am very confident saying that we don't fight for victory but we fight you know from victory because christ ultimately has won the victory so we are fighting from victory we are not fighting hopelessly. We are full of hope and confidence in what you know the Lord has uh, has, has done for us. Okay, now, uh, our friends, um, uh, let me ask you as I am I'm, I'm concluding. Let me ask you this: Is this how you you you've uh, you are praying for one another? You know, are you praying that your brothers and sisters, you know, in Christ, will be filled with this kind of knowledge? You know, that kind of uh, of of power. And would, uh, you know, overflow with this kind of uh, thanksgiving. Oh, friends, this is what God desires for you. This is what God wants you to do. And if you're not doing it, if you're not doing it, if you're not experiencing any of that, then you need to come to God. I will point you to him. Nobody else can give you that knowledge. Nobody else can give you that wisdom. Nobody else can give you that real, real wisdom. Nobody else can give you that real power. No, no, no. Only Christ. Look to him. If you've never come to Christ Jesus, if you've never embraced the redemptive, the sufficient redemptive of the work of Christ Jesus, today, call upon his name. Tell him that, Lord, I want you to deliver me from the domain of darkness and transfer me into your kingdom, into your kingdom. Right now, don't, 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 you know, grab this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. Do not lose this opportunity. Take your time. As you've heard, you know, this word, ask the Lord. 
And if you are already in the kingdom of God, but you happen to be, you know, experiencing, you know, some sort of weaknesses, maybe you are not enjoying all these benefits that we see. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Christ is the one who revives our heart. Call him, call him, tell him that, Lord, I, uh, I need to be revived once again. I need to be refreshed. Ask the Holy Spirit, you know, to work again in you. And reawaken you so that you may enjoy all these truths. Let's go before the Lord and, and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, for your word. And uh, we, we delight in your word, Lord, because your word gives life. Your word is, is the truth. And it is the only truth that we need in life. Thank you for the redemptive work, sufficient redemptive work that you've accomplished for us. There is no need to add to it. There is no need to supplement it. Oh, Lord, help us, you know, to be able to resist to any kind of teaching that comes, you know, to us, telling us that, you know, we are not complete in Christ, uh, that what you've done is not sufficient. Give us that, you know, wisdom. Give us that, you know, power to resist. Lord, fill us with your power you know, to help us live godly life. Fill us with the power that enables us, you know, to exemplify your qualities in this world we are living in. Lord, it is my prayer that this word, you'll cause it, you know, to bear fruits in our hearts so that we may not just, you know, you know, memorize it and have it in our, as a head knowledge. No, 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 no. That's, you know, as we've received it, that it, you know, penetrate inside our hearts and cause us, you know, to live for you, for your glory and for the benefit of, uh, you know, this church. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.